During the Soviet war in Afghanistan, the Red Army sought to create an anti-personnel mine that would be light enough that it could be dropped from an aircraft, but still sturdy and with enough explosive power to main the enemy. The PFM-1 Scatterable Landmine was born. Allegedly first deployed in the 1973 Israeli-Syrian conflict and more extensively during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. The PFM-1 is a shaped charge consisting of a polythene plastic shell with a 40 gram explosive liquid payload and a set of stabilizing wings. The green mine would be fielded extensively in the Soviet-Afghan war, with its primary deployment being thrown outside of an aircraft to glide into enemy positions without the need for manual planting. The mine originally was green colored and would be easily visible in the sands of Afghanistan. This would lead the mine being dubbed the Green Parrot. This would lead to different color patterns being available based on the environment. During the conflict, Western media outlets attributed the green color and vibrant design to mimic children's toys, leading to controversy and the denial of any claims that the mine was designed to mimic a toy by the Soviets. The main distribution methods of this mine were to be considered in its design and has been made that it can be distributed on a battlefield, along ambush routes, and through enemy territory. The mine can be deployed by infantry, from helicopter, out of a plane, fired from a mortar, or a grenade launcher. The mine itself had such a light construction that the environment itself would move the position of the mine. Heavy rains and snowstorms would be capable of moving the light mines down waterways, rivers, and into reservoirs, a major concern for villagers living near such water sources doing their bathing and washing. The mechanisms in place to cause detonation is an internal pressure primer set to a sensitivity of 5 kilograms. The incredibly light trigger mechanism makes these mines extremely dangerous to handle, in turn meaning that just holding the mine in your hands too firmly will cause detonation. The PFM-1 has no safety mechanisms. The detonation is armed by the removal of a pin which blocks a plunger which under spring tension will contact the detonator. The arming of the mine is not instant and can vary based on the mine from 1 to 45 minutes until armed. The only way to disarm the mine is to detonate it. The internal payload of the PFM-1 consists of a liquid explosive called VS-6-D. The explosive payload contained within the PFM-1 is not significant enough to cause death. Instead, the PFM-1 was designed with the intention to maim and produce costly casualties rather than to kill. The mine is small enough that if one was to step on the mine, one would probably lose their foot or portions of. To grab the mine would render one without a hand rather quickly, as well as the potential for the blast to deliver significant if not outright fatal trauma to the cranium, based on the proximity of the blast. Due to the nature of the explosive, attempts to remove these mines from war zones are difficult, as the mine must be destroyed. These mines in particular are one of the main mines called out by the Ottawa Convention, the global convention banning the use of anti-personnel mines. However, a unique variant of the mine, the PFM-1S, was designed that it would self-destruct after 1 to 40 hours after planting. In 2017, Belarus had declared that all Soviet-acquired PFM-1 landmines had been successfully destroyed as part of the stockpile removal effort on part of Belarus in cooperation with the NATO policy. Although most recently, during the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, the mines have been found in Ukraine in the Kharkiv region and later in the Mariupol region. This only shows that these mines are still very much in use.